Greetings, Blade fans. We've got a fixed blade for you today. And I might add, not simply any other fixed blade, but a very effective, extremely small hideout fixed blade. Yet, we're dealing with a full-size handle that is easy to hold and maneuver, no matter what your style of tactical blade use. And this is the Nightshade by T. Kell Knives. That's Tim Kell down in Georgia, running his shop and coming out with a multitude of models and designs of fixed blades. Everything from six inch blades down to this modest little two inch blade. And before you think that it's probably not that effective, Hold off, and we're going to take a look at what we've got here. And there's lots to see today because this comes with many accoutrements. And by accoutrements, I mean you get this great, I don't know if I can even get it all in the uh, frame there. Let's see. <laughs> all right. Here's what you get. All right. You get a TKL sticker you get a business card that I can't pick up off the table because it's such a nice thin plastic there's Tim's info alright you want to freeze frame on that that's him and he is a veteran of the USMC been uh, selling knives for a while now each of his knives is now coming in this really cool accordion case uh, I found it challenging to open it but hey you know he's just testing your strength to make sure you can use his blades but um, there's this interesting accordion uh, holder which I'm not going to be able to get apart in front of the camera again but that's okay and you get this very nice kydex sheath very small and minimalistic we're going to be looking at all this stuff a few times before we're done and um, very thoughtful every aspect of the design from the grommet holes and where they're placed to this tiny little uh, t2 adjustment for tension i was finding when this first came in that it was very difficult to get it out of the sheath but can pop that right off now because I backed off on that screw and it screws right through into the uh, other side of the kydex we'll get more into that in a moment um, so it comes with mine came with and I think he threw these in for my perusal these are his new camo G10 grips and they're in the bullet or grenade design, I believe it is. Calls them bullet grips, but I think it's a grenade design. Um, these are the grips that were installed. I took them off. Um, these are the multi-layer. This one is in a green and a black. And uh, I swapped them out for these. Also, you have your choice of screws. So. Um, I'm going to be opening a lot of little bags here, so be patient. So I could have gone with a uh, black screw. And these are, um, these screws have a name. Yes, Tim refers to these as his lashing screws. Because when they're in place, you can see straight through. And you can put a cord through there. You can... Um, use them to lash the knife to a pole or a post and make a makeshift spear very survival oriented or uh, any other purpose that you feel that you need to uh, put a cord through there so I left the uh, the bright colored uh, silver colored ones in place that came on those grips if I wanted a more subdued look I could use the black screw now um, I'm not a hundred percent sure of what he gave me to a review and I thank him again for the use of this knife to be able to review it 
but I may have gotten a few extras is I think what I'm trying to say so if you don't get them when you order the knife just check ahead and um, Tim's very easy to get uh, in touch with and uh, he will answer your questions but uh, there it is in the sheath but now let's uh, take a look at the knife uh, we're going to show you uh, the fact that it comes with a chain so this sheath can be hung from the neck I'm not entirely sure how I suppose you'd have to hang it this way so that's interesting I hadn't thought of that but it does come with a neck chain it might be possible to use one of the many clips and we're gonna get into that uh, why don't we get into that in a little bit sorry for being a little spaced out first cup of coffee one more to come <laughs> But this nightshade, and we're going to measure it up in a moment, is a wicked little blade. You can see how thick that grind, that sharpening bevel is. And the fact that we've got three holes here, which uh, lighten it and uh, perhaps uh, act as... Um, might be a little short to really consider those acting as a suction release. I'm going to consider that those are uh, a little bit more decorative than anything else. So it comes with a ring, and when we think ring, we think karambit, right? And um, you could use it in the index finger ring hold, and it lines up pretty well. I have just a slight angle in towards my forearm. Ideally, I like to hold a knife in a point down so that it is 90 degrees to the line of the, the base of the palm in the forearm okay now usually that's going to line up better the farther forward you can put this ring but in a knife this short there's only so far forward you can throw that ring we got a little nub on the end here which can act as a glass breaker or skull crusher for uh, non-lethal impact use I prefer to hold this knife without using the ring in the point up position so that I don't have to manage my pinky in there. I consider the ring on these smaller knives and even larger ones to be the best way to quickly pop that out of the sheath, particularly when it's uh, on the belt in a horizontal or a vertical position. We'll take a look at some of his new clips in a moment as well. You know, he's gone to uh, dis discrete carry concepts clips. And he gave me two for samples to take a look at. And we'll show you in a moment how they fit on the sheath. So again, you can pop it off easily with your finger because you've got these great aggressive little jimpings on the uh, top of the sheath for thumbing it off. A lot of makers and manufacturers don't consider that you want something there. First of all, you want the material to be there. And secondly, you want something a little rough so you have no problems thumbing it off. So again, I can get all four fingers on there easily. And my thumb right there, just long enough for that last section of my thumb. You don't want to overreach because this little sucker is sharp. I'm not going to do any paper cutting with it. It's not quite that sharp, but it's as sharp as a knife with this steep an angle on the grind can be. So uh, let's do some quick measurements because I'm going to want to talk about that blade stock as part of this conversation. Overall, it's about a six and a half inch knife, slightly less. The blade is two and a quarter, cutting edge is two, okay? Blade thickness in millimeters, 3.3. .3. And if we go to inches, we're, um, what do we got? 0.13. Handle thickness, just over a half inch, which for a fixed blade knife uh, you wouldn't want to go much thinner than that I don't think you want to be able to hold on to it particularly a small knife with a short blade 
Zero it out. Knife only. 3.35 ounces. And the sheath's going to be just a minimal add of weight, but let's take a look at that. With the sheath, we've got 3.86 too, so call it 3.9 ounces. And if I ever say inches instead of ounces, you know I mean ounces when we're talking about the weight. Um, so how do you use this little sucker? Well, um, you know, depending upon how you've been trained, and hopefully you've been trained, if not, uh, you've got a sharp little pointy little uh, utility knife here. And that point is pointy. One thing I will do, let's see if I can find a piece of paper real quick. And I'm looking. Bear with me, I had to walk into the other room with my wireless headset. Hopefully it's working better today than the last video. So, you can see how easily this pierces. It's a piercer and a ripper. It's not going to shave the paper very well, okay? It isn't that it isn't sharp. It's that the sharpening angle is probably... I'm thinking like 30 degrees, maybe 35 degrees. I didn't measure it. <clears throat> I don't know that I've got the equipment to measure it at this point in my YouTube career. Beautiful camo G10 handles, and these are relatively new, Tim tells me. So the holds we've got for this knife are this way. Let's see if I can back out a little more without losing my background. So we can hold it this way, we can hold it this way and cap the top, and that works very well for me. And you've got a sharpened edge here, so for you Pical guys, for you Libre fighter guys, this will work, all right? You don't have it sharpened all the way to here, but that's kind of a good thing because as that inches closer to your hand and your palm, you don't want to get cut, right? But that's enough to jab and rip. You flip it up this way, and you've got uh, a knife that will cut, particularly with the point or thrust. And look how small it is. So um, let's talk a little more about the sheath setup. So here is, and I don't have anything mounted on the sheath at this moment. I thought I would do it that way and then show you the various components that come with the knife. This comes with the knife. This is his plastic horizontal scout carry clip that mounts that way on the knife. I'm going to show you the mounted positions. I took some photos. We'll look at those in a moment. He also is now as an option offering the uh, DCC clips. I believe that's what they're called, and I'll leave you links to all of that stuff. Uh, dis discrete carry concepts. These are among some of the hottest clips going these days for both firearms and for knives. So this would mount this way and hook over your belt. And this tucks it way down inside the trousers. Um, if that's where you're putting it, or you could even clip it to some shorts or whatnot. Now the other one, here it is, is the horizontal carry, scout carry, kind of a double clip. You can see it comes with some um, plastic or rubber standoffs, because when you mount this one, you need to raise it away a little bit so these clips come over the rise in the sheath there. So uh, I'm going to show you how all this looks. I can grab my print. So um, there's the setups, okay? There's an angled setup using one screw in case you want to cant that 
in kind of an appendix carry or in a kidney carry, there is the double or the horizontal clip in a scout carry. And it's up to you as to where you position this on the body. You can position it anywhere. Here is the uh, two screws with the clip straight up for a vertical carry. And there is the in included plastic clip for horizontal scout carry. So there is a good shot for you to freeze if you wanted to take a look at that. Okay. So what you're getting is the grips, the sheath, the horizontal plastic clip, and the chain, I believe. I think the chain does come with it. I'm sure Tim will see this review and he'll respond, particularly if you have any questions. Now the knives are all 1095. They are specially heat treated uh, and they do hold an edge in there. It is a very tough steel. You can look up 1095. It is a rustable steel, so it will oxidize, but he uses his now famous nickel boron coating in kind of what he calls his battle-worn finish. He's saying that may change. He may be uh, uh, spicing them up a little bit. I don't know what he has in mind, but this is the battle-worn finish. And the coating, if you saw my past two reviews on Tim's knives, this is so slick, it's like Teflon. And what that does is protect this from corrosion, but also makes it extremely smooth on the slice, so you pass through materials. Now the geometry of this particular knife, again, isn't going to be a slicey one. And it's really kind of a worn cliff, right? Unless you turn it that way, and it's a Tonto. But let's take a look at um, a couple others for comparison. First of all, this is the Guardian, which I previously reviewed. And this is also a Warncliffe style with a long sharpened top edge. And it actually has three edges on this one. So, you know, take your pick as to which one you want to use. This also has a pretty thick stock and a pretty steep grind. But for size, there is the Guardian next to the Nightshade. Then one other that was reviewed is the Mercenary. And this is a full-size battle knife, okay? You can see for size that, you know, this is up there around the 6-inch mark. Yeah, six inches overall, ten and three quarters. So it's a big full-size knife, and you're going to get a lot more utility use out of this knife, but it's not going to carry anywhere near as discreetly as the nightshade. The nightshade just disappears. And again, with the nightshade, you could simply pop it in your pocket. That's why I left this off. I tend to... Pop it in my pocket like that, front pocket carry, and um, reach in for it and just thumb the sheath off. Just don't drag backwards with the blade. You may uh, slice your pocket open. Put these guys away. And here is a very popular discreet carry knife. Here's the Street Beat by Spyderco, designed by Fred Perrin. You can see that this is usually smaller than the other fixed blades that I show, and yet it's an inch longer than the nightshade. If we use the Griptilian for comparison, the Griptilian is bigger. Look at that. The Griptilian actually closed is sort of coming up on the length of this knife opened, or obviously it's a fixed blade. And lastly, but not leastly, look at the size of the Rat 1 next to the Nightshade. And if we close up the Rat 1, 
we're getting even closer to the full size of this knife. So I'm not sure what more I can tell you except that in all TKL knives uh, will have a model for you. I can almost guarantee it. This might be not the one because of the size but it might exactly fit your bill for something you can make at the ready instantly and hold in a number of different positions. You like karambit? No problem. You like pinky in the ring? No problem. You like it outside? No problem. Again, I see the value in the ring of putting an index finger through there and snapping it out of the sheath when it's on your belt extremely fast. You can see we've got uh, some of the cutting marks still there. These aren't a highly finished knife as far as the steel goes. They're meant to be used. They're meant to be carried. And what I found too is a little bit of tough glide on this exposed steel here uh, protects it quite well against uh, moisture or your oil of choice. But the tough glide turns into a dry lubricant and it becomes almost as slick as the nickel boron. Uh, just my suggestion, not necessarily the uh, maker's suggestion. These are USA made. Um, Tim has the components made, I believe, off-site, but he does a tremendous amount of work and assembly on-site at his Georgia shop. Kudos to him and um, the job that he does turning out really useful products for us all. Hope you enjoyed this review and don't forget to give it a like. If you have any questions, put them in the comments and either myself or perhaps Tim will get back to you with your answer. And uh, check the links. I should have links to uh, both his main page as well as this particular knife and any accessories that you may want to have included with your purchase if you do buy. Be well, take care, see you soon.